do, I think, is uh, start out with questions and answers from the big log review package. We'll do that for a few minutes. You can write this down if you want to, or if you want to, I can print this up for you after the fact, whichever way you think you're going to learn best. So if you learn best by writing stuff, great. If you find you're missing stuff when you're writing stuff, don't bother writing it. I'll print it up for you afterwards. Can you get that door for me? And I'll leave this one open. Okay. <laughs> Cam, for the sake of posterity, can we just let whatever it is die that we're letting die? Okay. Log tutorial number two. Wealth is fleeting, Caitlin. Wealth is fleeting. For yea, verily, we are all like dust in the wind. I think it's a Kansas song or something like that. So uh, questions from the big review. Which ones would you like me to go over? Give me a second. I'll load it up. Uh, provincial exam review, the 2009 one, which is this one. Which ones would you like me to do? Now is your chance to ask. Caitlin, 26, love to. Okay. 26. Okay, first thing I would be doing is I would say, I'm pretty sure this is an exponential growth kind of a word problem because I see uh, intensity and percentages and reduce for each meter and all that stuff. Okay, so I think the very first thing I would do. because I feel better now. It's no longer blank. Now let's see if I can figure stuff out. Now I'm noticing that in this case I don't think we're talking about time. It looks like what's changing actually is depth. So I might in my real equation if I was doing this like in a physics class or something, Caitlin, I might put a D there instead of a T, but I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll deal with that when I need to. Um, what's the period? Every what? You know what? The period's one. Yay. Did they tell me what my final amount is? I think I want to end up... I think my final amount... And I can either write that as 10% or I can write it as 0.1. Now, if I'm ending up with 10%, what percent is my initial amount? What am I starting out with? I could either write 100% or 1. That's going to be my initial. <coughs> okay? Right? We said when we're talking about a percentage, if they give you a final percent, okay, if they give you a final percent remaining, then uh, probably your initial amount was uh, 100%. Okay? Um, Caitlin, I'm reducing by 2%. What's my growth constant, my growth rate going to be if I'm losing 2%? 98% is what I'm keeping. So I think my equation is going to look like this. 10%. Now I think in the answer key I use 10 and 100 for some reason. Usually what I've done with you guys is I've used 0.1 and uh, 1 because that's not going to be part of the equation at all. But I think when I divided by 100, I got 0.1 and 1 anyways on my next line. Kathy Palmer. 0.92. Kathy Palmer. 9.8, thank you. Thinking of another question already. Um, and I'll, you know what, I'll put D for depth instead of T for time. Is that okay? And I'm assuming that one's not going to make a difference there at all, is it? How would I solve for D? log both sides. Do I, are you okay with the rest or do you want me to keep going? You okay with the rest? Okay. Log both sides. And this one hasn't got a bunch of junk there. I think you'll end up with log 0.1 divided by log of 0.98. Okay. By the way, um, here's also probably what I would have done at the very beginning. Caitlin, can you look up for a second, kiddo? What am I losing for each meter? You need a Kleenex? I got Kleenex over there. Can you even better? What am I losing each meter, Caitlin? What percent? Well, there's no way 
that after five meters, I've lost 90%. Five is a bad answer to me. Right? If I'm only losing 2% each meter, there's no way I lost 90% in five meters. In fact, at best, I've lost a little more than 10% or something like that. So that's a bad answer. Um, I'm guessing probably C or D, to be quite honest, but I don't know. Okay. And I, again, what I've really tried to emphasize with you guys is you can often get rid of nonsense answers and save yourself the oops mistakes, right? Next one. 20, love to. <coughs> Twenty's kind of yucky. Twenty is a simplifying log rules question. Uh, sorry on the recording, I just hit pause and I can't remember. I was in mid sentence. Um, th this is a pretty challenging one. It's it's got a number of. of I would consider this about a B level question. Okay. Uh, I think I'm looking breaking it up because I see more than one term. Positives on. Negatives on the, so, uh, except I'll reverse that. On top means positive, on the bottom means negative. So I'm going to have this log of 100 plus log of x cubed. Uh, you know what? Can I do that right away? Uh, minus log y. I'm kind of thinking A yuck and B D yuck. Let's see what else I can do here. Um, what is the log of 100? Oh, you're saying this is 2 plus 3 log x minus log y. And I think I do have that. Oh, there you go. See? Okay. So they do like to do that once in a while. Mix up pure variables and some numerical answers as well with, with a good base. So you may see, for example, that a, a base 6 and a 36 there or something like that. Okay. This is a little extra work, but it wasn't too bad. Next. 17? Sure. Written section number 17. Ah, the first person to ask me a written question. No, nope, there's a written section on this big review, the last, well, second last page. Population of a nest of ants can, oh, you know what? This is an exponential growth. If you can, my friend, I'd write this. So now I feel better. On the written section, that'd be at the very, very end. Okay? Um, let's see. Did they give me my initial population, Chica? What? 12,000. Did they give me my final population? What? 300,000, you said? Right? Sure? It was your ankle you hurt, right? Not. Okay, just make sure. Um, okay, now the rest of this is going to be a little bit... First of all, when they're asking for how many weeks, I think they're asking for total time. In fact, I think that this eight weeks here, isn't that the length of one growth period? It triples every what? Eight weeks. I think that's the growth period. By the way, multiply threefold or triple, I think that's telling me that. Is that okay? Let's put everything together. We're going to have... 300,000 equals 12,000, 3 to the t over 8. Now what, Chica? 12 by 12,000? Absolutely. What do you get, Colin? Even? Oh, that's nice. So you get 25 equals... 3 to the t over 8. 27 would have been really nice because then I wouldn't have actually needed logs. I could have written this as 3 to something equals 3 to something and actually solved it by equating the exponents. Uh, 25, though, 
Okay. Now what, Chica? Both sides. And I'll get the log of 25 equals t over 8 log 3. Oh, and now it's cross multiplied. <coughs> Are you okay with the step kiddo? In fact, I think I'll get this. T is going to end up being, it's going to be that times that divided by that when I do the math. It's going to be 8 times the log of 25 divided by the log of 3. And I turned my graphing calculator off. Sorry, what'd you get? 23.44? Uh, and we're in weeks, I think. Is that what the answer says, by the way? Answers are on the last page there? Yep. Okay. Oh, and it said accurate uh, to at least two decimal places? Fine. Oh, well, you're on the internet now. Oh, okay. Did, do you have a calculator from me already? Okay. Yeah, yeah, right now. 15? I have no idea what question you're talking about. Let me look at it first, then you can start explaining stuff. 15, written or multiple choice? This guy here? Yeah. Okay. I don't know. Let's try it. Um, they have a simple method for taking a question that everyone, well, most kids will get right and making it harder. They replace everything with letters. So, Colin, let me just write one with numbers next to it, and we'll do the same stuff with the letters. If I gave you this. Yeah, just hang on. If I gave you something like that, what would you do? And let me pause first. Um, it seems to me, Colin, here, you know what I would do first? Divide by 40, wouldn't I? Yeah? You know what I'm going to do first here? Divide by A. First thing I would do is I would write this as that. And I just saw some lights already go on because I think you started to glance at the answers and figure out what it's going to be. Let's walk through it. Now I'll take the log of both sides. Right? Move the x to the front. How to get the x by itself. Okay. Now, if we had numbers here, if we had numbers here, this is what we would write because we would go to our calculator. We would have changed that to a decimal already, right? We would just go straight plug and chug. Ah, this is the algebraic version, non-calc. What's dividing inside a log the same as? Yeah, you already, I heard you say, log of C minus log of A divided by log B. Common mistakes to avoid. I still see some kids that want to go, well, can I cancel out the logs? No, no, no. They're mathematical operations, not variables. I can't just cross those out. And I've never given you a rule for dividing two logs. It's always been dividing one thing, two things inside the same log becomes subtraction. Uh, anyways, the answer would be uh, C. Is that okay? Madison, you had a question? Okay. Simplify. I guess uh, use my log rules. And the only thing that I... Oh, you saw it? Well, let's keep going anyways. Um, I don't know. Let's find out. Let's break it up. Okay? Uh, positives on, negatives on the... Except in reverse. On the top means positive, on the bottom means negative. I'm going to write... Somebody looking for me? 
No, it's actually terribly. Howdy. So we're basically telling them, go get it done. <laughs> Apologize. I want to walk through this question anyhow. Sorry for all the interruptions, those of you on the internet at home. That's my eighth interruption. Live with it. I'm popular. Um, so it would look like this, Madison. Uh, log base A of 1. Take away log base A of A. And you know what? Instead of writing to the B, I'd move the B to the front. By the way, what is log base A of A? So this whole thing here would just... Uh, and um, what's the log base A of 1? In fact, what's the log base anything of 1? Yeah, this is 0 take away b, which I think is just negative b. That's actually a nice little question. And I don't mean that, that I like this question, I like this question, I like this question. I'm just saying the nerd within me goes, oh, I like it when something that ugly ends up being something that nice. 14, someone said? Okay. 14. This is the log definition, and I have to go a little negative on you and say, um, if you don't know this, you're in trouble. Okay? You need to be able to do this almost in your sleep. You need to be able to go from exponent to log to exponent to log to exponent to log to exponent to log. And I, I, I apologize, but i got to be really honest and put a little fear into you and say, this is as close as it gets to free marks. So if I want to write this as a logarithm, well, first of all, my base is 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 my base. It's going to be log base Q. Remember 14? Log base Q of P equals R. That's the logarithmic form because it's that to that equals that. Okay? You need to be able to flip-flop back and forth almost in your sleep without thinking, my friend. Sorry, I didn't want to come across as real negative, but... This is crucial, crucial, crucial. Next. 12. No one's going to dare ask a question again. No, you need to. So, undo. Let's try this again. I thought I clicked there. That's better. Um, this would be fair game on the calculator or on the non-calculator or on the written section. So on the written section, I think I am going to give you some kind of a log equation. What do I mean by a log equation? An equation that has logs in it, right? Um, is there logs in everything in this equation? No. So I'm not going to write this as one log equals one log. Logs cancel. I am going to write this as one log equals a number and then actually do number 14. I'm going to write it as a logarithm or as an exponent. So you ready? Um, my bases are all the same. Okay, by the way, um, I don't remember if I actually put one on your test or not, but I, for a while there I was saying my base is all the same so I can use my log rules. The only like nasty twist on this that I've ever seen would have been maybe a log base 9 right here. Because what's my original base? 3. If I wrote this as a base Three, I'd have on the bottom a log base 3 of 9. I'd have a 2 in the denominator, and I, I could deal with it. Okay. They're not going to give you a base 3 and a base 7. And I'll be honest, rarely do I see them giving you different bases at all in these kinds of questions. So my bases are the same. What's adding two logs the same as? Yep, I would write this as the log base 3 of... I put the x, instead of x minus 6, x, we, we're used to seeing the shorter term in front, so x bracket x minus 6. Is that okay? Okay. Uh, if there was a log over here, now I could cancel out the log. I don't have a log over here, but I said to you, actually, one equation is the same as two equations. This is two equations. What's the exponential form of this? I'll give you a hint. Your base is your base is your base is your base. 3 to the power of 3 equals what's inside the log really carefully, what is 3 to the third? It's not 9. It's not 9. It's not 9. So let's try this again. Really carefully, 
what's three to the... By the way, I'll bet you one of those answers is what you would get if you put a nine there. 27. Just hang on. Hang on. Um, you get this. Uh, what kind of an equation is this, Priya? Well, I'm going to have to get rid of the brackets first. Let's look at it this way. We get 27 equals x squared minus 6x. Say, what kind of an equation is this? It's a quadratic. How do I know? Got a squared. How do I solve the quadratic? First thing, make it equal to. So I'm going to go like this. 0 equals x squared minus 6x minus 27. Does this factor, are there numbers that multiply to negative 27 and add to negative 6? Oh, okay. So my roots are, my solutions are 9 and negative 3, but I can't stop there. I've got to go back and check for extraneous in the original typewritten equation. And I'm pretty sure I can't put a neg uh, sorry, I can't put a negative 3 right there. Because if I put a negative 3 right there, did I do this right? Yeah, that's extraneous. Sorry. Doing bad math. Uh, 9 works, though, because 9 take away 6 will give me a positive. For some reason, I was going 6 take away 9 in here and going, what the heck? So, yeah, B. Basically, if you shoot up and say 2 cubed is 9, it's still extraneous. Yeah. 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 I don't think you would. Well, I see you said 1. If you put a 9 there, I would have just said 9 to You'd have that right there, which doesn't exactly factor. Let's just decide we're not going to do that. Let's decide we'll remember our math eight. But and those are the those are what I call the mistakes. I always do say to my students I never make mistakes. And what I meant by a mistake was the sloppy ones. I, I'm still the king of going uh, two times three is five. What did I really, I added them. I'm still the king of two and three to me are five, not six. I do that all the time. And you see me as I'm doing the work. That's the tricky part to getting 100% in this stuff is getting rid of those. Next question, please. Yo. <laughs> that to that equals what's inside the log. We wrote it as an exponent. Okay. 21. Very similar question to what was just asked. I think we're going to get a quadratic. I see some logs and some not. Okay. My base is pattern the same. So I'm going to write this as one thing equals one thing. I'll combine the logs on the left-hand side. Okay. A little note, by the way, I can't. I might be giving you a hint. I might not. I know. I can't remember if I left it this way or not. What if the two was over here and the log was over here? Get all your logs to one side. Get all your non-logs to the other side. Don't try and combine stuff. Yeah. Yep. Uh, you're going to have x plus four. Uh, plus means times. 6 minus x, that equals 2. Okay. Jordan, my friend, this is our official log definition. We said this. If you know a to the b equals c, you also know log base a of c equals b. And it goes in reverse. You need to know this in your sleep. So what I'm doing here is I'm saying I'm taking this, I, an uglier this, I agree, and I'm turning it into that. My base is my base is my base. To that equals what's inside the log. Okay? That's key. By the way, oh, uh, Colin, carefully, what is 3 squared? Don't say 6. 9. And I'll be honest, although I almost always foil in my head, what's weird about this? The negative x, I'm going to foil this one out very, very carefully. I'm not going to take the risk that I make a dumb mistake. Okay? 
I'll have a 6x. I'll have a negative x squared. I'll have a positive 24. I'll have a negative 4x. This is going to be a quadratic, but let's gather like terms first. I'm going to be extra careful here. 9 equals, I'll have a negative x squared. I'll have a positive 2x. And I'll have a positive 24. Right? How do I solve a quadratic? Now, I'm betting this one factors. Do you know how I know this one factors? No decimal answers. So although it would be easier to minus the 9 over, have I ever factored one where the x squared was negative? And there's a reason why we don't bother teaching you. You don't need to. I'm going to actually move these three guys over to this side. It's going to be, I guess, more mental work, but it's still Michael going to be one line. So I would write this as positive x squared minus 2x, and then I'll minus 24 from the 9, and I'll get negative 15 equals 0. And now I smile because I think this does factor. Numbers that multiply to negative 15 and add to negative 2. Negative 5 and positive 3, you said? And now I got my roots, 5 and negative 3. Now, by the way, you may have noticed in most of our questions, the positive root was OK and the negative one was extraneous. I'm a little leery about this one, Pat. Because that x was negative initially, I'll bet you the negative one is going to be the good one. Let's go check. Uh, can I stick a 5 in here? Let's see. 5 plus 4, 9. That works. 6 take away 5, 9. That works. So the 5 is OK. What about the negative 3? Negative 3 plus 4, that's positive. That works. 6 minus minus 3. You know what? As it turns out, this is one of those rare equa equa uh, equations where no extraneous root path. They both work. You asked me this one, didn't you? Yeah. Thank you for your full attention the whole way. Okay. Yep. I'm willing to do whatever you guys want. Right now I'm doing Q&A. I've cleared my calendar, honestly, till 6. I don't want to go that long. But there have been times in the past years where I've had to with some kids and doing dinner with some friends at 7, so 6 is my cutoff with my former teacher that I retired with. Was there a topic you wanted me to go over? I can. We're good? Okay. Any others? No problem. Sorry, what, Colin? Oh, no, never mind. This is weird. I rather I've done a better job of teaching. Maybe starting with logs at the beginning when you guys are fresh has made a difference. Because last year, I had about 45 kids crammed in here. Like, it was, it was packed, and, and kids were... Uh, although I did go a bit faster last year. Jimmy, any questions? No? 54? I'd love to do 54. I'm going to try. Pat, you just saw it because I like this question. I like this question. I like this question. Pat, how would you solve this? Yeah, write it as an exponent. Yeah, write the second version of this. 5 squared equals x minus 3. By the way, what is 5 squared? Don't you dare say 10, Colin. 25. But I'm hoping this this way you'll never do it on a test, right? If you haven't clued in, when you make a mistake, I'm not picking on you to make fun of you. I figure if I grind it, it's not going to happen when it counts. That's the whole goal. And it's fun, I have to admit, as well. I can't, I can't deny that. 28, yes? And does 28 work in the original? Yep. Let's see. Sure can. All right. 55. For those of you who are screencasting at home, this is our 12th interruption. I apologize for the disjointedness of this. But people keep coming in. Driving me crazy. 
55, this looks pretty good. Pat, you asked 55? I did. Now, the good news is um, they gave me the equation, which probably means I really don't need to know the physics behind this. Kill of class, I'm not going to freak out. I'm going to read this carefully. I'm going to say base E? Yes. Okay. Um, what do you think the letter P stands for? P is uh, probably pressure. Probably pressure? Uh, pressure, which is measured in what, by the way? Pascal. Pascal. So, uh, all I'm saying is if I see a number that has a kilopascal next to it, I'm putting that in the letter P. Okay. Uh, what does the letter A stand for according to this question? Okay. So if I see a number that has the kilometers next to it, that's going in for the A. They want me to find what? Oh, so they're asking me to solve for P. What's that 5? Okay, P is going to be 100 times E. And then I'll show you what you would type on your calculator to the power of bracket negative 0.139 times 5. And I'll show you what this would look like then. This is nice. I'm not actually having to do LN. In fact, this question, you know what's really testing? Do you know where the E button is on your calculator? That's what it's testing. Because I'm not doing LN or anything like that. It's going to look like this. 100. Do you know where the E button is on your calculator? I do. Where? Uh, do, you know where the, do you know where the LN button is on your calculator? Yeah, it's second function LN. See it there? Because that actually types E to the power of bracket, which is way shorter to hit. So I'm going to go times second function LN, E to the power of bracket, negative 0.139 times 5. And the correct answer is, looks like 49.9. Is that an answer there? I hope, I think, I hope, I think, I hope. 50. 50. Apparently 5 kilometers above the Earth, it's 50 kilopascals. By the way, what's the pressure at the surface of the Earth? What's the initial amount? Read the question carefully. What's sitting where the initial amount variable is? 100. Yeah, pressure on sea level, it's actually 101 kilopascals if I recall. 101 point something, but 100 roughly. Right? You, you can get a lot of information from these equations just by remembering I know what these variables mean even if I don't know what they are. Right? Bracket? Try again. I'll leave that up there for you. In fact, you know what I'll do? I'll go clear, I'll go second function, enter, I'll hit enter, and then I'll get really, really clever. For you, Pat, I'm going to go like this. Clip. I'll put the calculator in there, too, just for you. And now you know what the heck I typed. Next? Yep, Jimmy. 58, love to. Oh, an if then question. Okay. So again, I'll try and walk you through how my devious little brain works when I approach these. The first thing, Jimmy, I would look for is there a base change? Well, no, both logs are base 10. Okay. Then, if there's more than one log, I'd combine them. If there's one log, I'll break it up. I think they gave me one log, so I'm going to try and break this up. Uh, what's happening, Jimmy, between the 10 and the C squared mathematically? Adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing? Multiplying. What's multiplying inside a log the same as? Adding, right? It's going to be this, kiddo. Uh, but you know what? Instead of writing c squared, can I just move the 2 to the front right away because we've been doing that a whole bunch of times? Okay. Um, what is the log of 10? 1, because it's log base 10, up 10. Plus 2. Sorry, Colin, what did you say log c was? Oh, are you saying this is 1 plus 2 times 3? 7. This would be totally fair game on a non-calc section. Or, I, you know what, uh, by the way, on the provincial, what they also do is, so they have 16, I think, non-calc questions. 
but in the next 10 questions, about eight of those can be done without a calculator as well, because that way kids that finish part one early aren't just twiddling their thumbs, they can keep moving on. But I'll talk about that when we get to June. Seven. Uh, someone else had one, I thought I heard. Seven zero? I think the answer is A, isn't it? Jeez, I mean, you can do them that fast, Mr. You, you, you get good at this after a while. Okay? Fly bothering you? Well, there ain't no flies on me. Um, positives on top, negatives on the... In other words, when I break this up, what's on top is going to be positive. What's on the bottom is going to be negative. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to break this up because i got nothing else to work with here. So I would write this as the log of x take away the log of 100 take away the log of y again the y is negative but this timesing down there yeah but it's dividing the x it's it's negative pat what's the log of 100 what's the log of 100 10 to what power equals 100 Right? Yeah. That, I, I, I see my answer, so I'm quitting. Yeah, right. I don't know either, but I've long since stopped trying to figure you out. Yes, Jen? 56. I tried for a while there. I wasn't sleeping. It was, it was ugly. 56? Yeah. Great question. This is nasty. Okay? I don't know. Let's find out. Well, I'm, can I, I'll rephrase that, Jen. It's scary looking. 56. Okay. Because here's what I think they've done. They probably had the same number sitting there and there initially. And then they said, ah, this exam's too easy. How do we make this tougher? And they probably took this question and replaced the number with a variable, knowing that's going to scare kids. But I think these are both base A in disguise, are they not? So let's try writing it that way. If I wanted to write square root as an exponent, what would I write? So this is going to be A to the 1 half to the 6x minus 2. And that equals A squared to the 2x plus 3. Now what? I, th I think I'm going to go power to a power on both sides. I think I'm going to go like that. and Because like, that's what I would do if it was like a 5 and a 5 there. Right? So uh, I'll get this. A to the, What's half of 6x? 3x minus. What's half of 2? Half of 2? Half of 2? Thank you. Multiplying by a half, same as going half of. Okay. Uh, that equals... A to the, I think we're going to get 4x plus 6. Yep. <coughs> Are my bases the same? I can equate the exponents. Now that means, by the way, you notice I didn't do logs to solve this. This also would be a fair game, non-calc, trickier non-calc, but non-calc question. Uh, the equation you're going to end up solving is going to be 3x minus 1 equals 4x plus 6. Are you okay with the rest of it? I think you'll minus 3x from both sides, and I think you'll minus 6 from both sides. I think it's going to get negative 7a, I think. But I'll, you, you okay with the rest of it, Jeff? Yep. Yes? 83. I have no idea. You have to actually say, hey, Mr. Duick, I'd like you to look at number 83. I know you think I have these memorized, but I haven't yet. If there was 105 questions instead of 110, then I'd probably have them memorized, but it's those extra five questions. Yep, yep. Totally, it's base 2, base 2. Colin, 2, 4, 
8, 16, 32. In fact, I'm comfortable asking a deal with a 64 or a 128 or a 256. I'm comfy with all those. And then it goes 512, 1,024, 4,000 and, sorry, what? If I'm going to put a big exponent, it's going to be a 2 to the... Thank you. I would feel totally comfortable putting it there. I don't know. I haven't memorized the test. I typed it up about a week ago. Okay. It, it's counting by twos, Colin. I'm not going to deal... Well, 3 to the 4th, I probably would expect... I, I think that was one of the ones I told you to memorize, 81. Oh, yeah, I gave you a list of exponents that I said were fair game, didn't I? Oh, yeah, 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 they told me to write that down. Oh, look at that. Mr. Dewitt, you think of these things. Been there, done that? Take care. Oh, so when I said memorize them and I wrote down worth memorizing, and then when I published it in the notes online as stuff worth memorizing, I wasn't clear enough? Okay, my bad. Apparently, I have to be really obvious for Colin. Are, are you saying that by making the quizzes and making the review tougher, you actually did find the test better? Really? Well, that's a good way to learn, isn't it? Why not find the tests easy for a change and find the homework tough? That should be the way a course is run, isn't it? Really? Wow. So that, that's the goal. It's not a pleasant procedure, uh, but the test becomes much nicer. That's unit one. That's the, what we're going to be doing this next unit. Yeah, we are. Colin? What's my website, Colin? Click here to access notes. Doesn't matter whether you're block E or F or G. I put it on all of them. And I bet you it's called something like worth memorizing. I'll bet you, I'll bet you, I'll bet you. Let's see. Is that it? I wonder, I wonder, I wonder. Let's find out. Yep. I'll put it on the desktop because I don't want to leave it there. I'm using Google Chrome. It automatically does it without saving. Well, no, it's, it takes up less memory and it's faster. Oh, look at that. I see some exponents written in different colors. Look at that. I don't know. There's probably other stuff I've said worth memorizing along the way, but that's the only lesson that I entitled worth memorizing. Next. Surely you must have questions since you just got here. You're doing good? Okay. I thought I had a question, but then I got over the question Cool enough? <laughs> Anyone else? <laughs> For those of you listening at home, people are thinking and humming and hawing. This tutorial may be shorter than I planned, but I'll probably send out the email to my big unit review tutorial that I ran last year. It's about an hour long. If you feel like you need to see the entire unit all in one fell swoop, I'll send an email out with that link. For which one? 8080? This, this one is actually nasty. Did I do this one in class with you? I did it one of my blocks. I, in fact, I would argue that number 80, I think it was one of the five toughest questions on this review. Okay? And the reason is what they're asking. They're asking how many times greater will 50 weeks be than 20 weeks? Let me copy this first of all. And to do that, I need to put a couple of things together. Jen, suppose you have $50 on you. I have $5 on me. How many times more than me do you have? 
how do you get a 10 from a 50 and a 5? Mathematically, how would you get a 10 from a 50 and a 5? I 50 times 5 is 250. How would you get a 10 from a... Would you not go 50 divided by 5? Okay, let's try it again. Because this is important. I'm making the point here. Um, let's suppose you have 100 bucks and I have 20 bucks. How many times more than me do you have? How would you turn a 100 and a 20 into a 5? Divide. I think here's what's going to happen. They want to know how many times bigger. I think I'm going to find an algebraic expression for 50 weeks. Find an algebraic expression for 20 weeks and divide them. Let's see. 20 weeks. Oh, and it's exponential growth, so I probably would have written this somewhere. Did they tell me the final amount after 20 weeks? No, so I'll write A. Did they tell me the initial amount? No, so I'll write A0. Ooh, triple, I'm pretty sure that means there's going to be a 3 here. Triple every what? How many weeks? That's my period, 7. And I, I think 20 weeks, that's where the 20 would go. That's an algebraic expression for how many insects there are after 20 weeks. I'm going to do the same thing for 50 weeks. I don't know the final amount still. I don't know the initial amount still. Triple. 50 weeks every 7 weeks. Uh, I'll call this final amount for 20, final amount for 50. And to find out how many times bigger this guy is than that guy, what mathematical operation am I going to do? Divide. I'm going to divide this by that, but I'm not going to divide left side by left side. I'm going to divide expression by expression. I'll write it as a big fraction. It's going to look like this. Here's my 50 weeks. Here's my 20 weeks. And the first thing I notice, I breathe a little sigh of relief, because what happens to my initial amounts? They cancel, which is good, because I didn't know it. And I was looking at their answers going, how the heck did they get numerical answers? They didn't tell me the initial amount. Well, the initial amount would be the same for both, because it's the same insect colony. Oh, that's going to cancel. In fact, here's what I have. 3 to the 50 over 7 divided by 3 to the 20 over 7. Oh, are my bases the same? When I'm dividing, what did I do with the exponents? Think carefully. Subtract. Right? Remember Math 9? I think the final answer is going to be 3 to the power of 50 over 7 take away 20 over 7. And do you know what 50 over 7 take away 20 over 7 is? I think 30 over 7. I think it's going to be 3 to the 30 over 7. Now when you type this into your calculator, you're going to go 3 to the power of bracket 30 divided by 7. Close bracket. That should give you it. 110.87b. Do you see why I meet, felt, felt this is fairly nasty? First of all, you have to put that connection of dividing together. Then you're finding... Fascinating. Another interruption. Then you're... Don't want you. Then you're finding an algebraic expression for 20 weeks, and it's a little scary because you've got two things you don't know, which terrifies kids, makes them think they're doing it wrong. 50 weeks, two things you don't know, terrifies kids, makes them think they're doing it wrong. Ah, but when you write this amount divided by that amount, stuff cancels, and you get up with all numbers. Yep. I would consider this fair game as a nasty question. Are you asking me, would 12 of these be on the test? No. Does that make sense, though, now that I've gone through it? Yeah. Okay. I, I, I don't like the way this one's phrased very much, either. Um, this was number 80. Let me just look for a second. I'm a little surprised. This was from the January 2004 exam. It was question number 20. 
I'm a little surprised on the January 2004 exam there was one more log question. I would have put this one as the last log question because I felt this one was fairly tough. Usually when you come to a yucky one, the next one is a new topic and real easy. Usually. Next. 91. Ooh, near the end. Good question. This one is totally fair game. And in fact, there will be one something like this on the non-calc section of your task. Colin, what's my base on the left side? And let me give you a hint. It's not one-ninth. Yep. Uh, in fact, three to the what? OK. I'm going to write this 3 to the negative 2 to the power of x. And yeah, you're already going one step ahead, power to a power. And I'm going to write this as uh, 27 is 3 to what power, Colin? 3 to the third. Good for you. I'm so glad you got that, right? To the uh, 2 minus x. Can you see where we're going now? OK, yeah. You want to be really careful taking. I love taking shortcuts. I've made so many sloppy mistakes getting rid of those brackets that I usually don't hear on a test especially. It's going to be, yeah, negative 2x, uh, 3 to that power, equals 3 to the 6 minus 3x. Colin, are my bases the same? Then I can equate the exponents. In fact, the equation I'm going to solve is this puppy here. I would plus 3x to both. Holy smokes, I'm done. So if I plus 3x to both sides, won't I just get 1x equals 6? Got the x by itself already. D. Oh, that was kind of nice. Next. People are good. I'm going to get stopped. 